Hey everyone, I just want to make a quick video about why I personally love rabbits, raising them for multiple reasons, whether it be for meat or for what we call in the gardens, the black gold. These rabbits have been in this spot here for going on close to a year now. The tarp is down to collect the poop that I use to put on to fruit trees and everything else now but I just recently put this tarp down about a month ago and the reason I did that is for this as you can see this soil here is loose very beautiful this is going to be a future site for some trees come spring and summer I'm looking to possibly put maybe some two if not three kumquats here this is about a uh, seven foot by a four foot area so I'll try to fit as much as I can in here like I said the soil here is just beautiful I come here and just loosen it up as much as I can here and there I take more poop off the top lay it back down <clears throat> I saw a huge earthworm got away but there are plenty of other worms here as you can see I might end up actually putting some more poop down here today and just come fluff it all back up I'll also come here from time to time and just rip up these roots I'm gonna get as much of these roots and stuff out of here as possible. But yeah, this is one of the reasons why I love rabbits here. They give you fresh organic fertilizer every day. You can raise them for meat. You can keep their fur. You know, there's a multi-purpose animal. I recommend anyone who's doing organic garden to own them, either rabbits or chickens. And I'm actually looking soon to add chickens here to the backyard myself. And even here, I see all these new baby worms that's coming about. Come this area right there. This area a little bit. <sighs> this real fat guy right here. We need to go to the bait shop, right? And you wouldn't go fishing, because come digging your garden. <clears throat> like I said, this will be the spot for, I believe I can fit two of my, uh, quite trees in this area or if not maybe three or depends on how 
big I want them to get. I may put, keep one or two orange trees here. Either the car car or the Washington Naval, or maybe even the Valencia. I don't know how big I'm gonna allow those trees to grow yet. They're still in pots anyway, but they have grown significantly. I'll actually go probably make another video. Here's another one later on today on actually how big they have gotten since I had them. I'm trying to smooth this area back out a little bit. This area is filled with roots, but this is the first place where I put the rabbit cage when I first built it. So the roots are most likely screaming. This tree here, I'll right, go over here. I can show you the pomegranates. This is the uh, Christina pomegranate. Right down here, about six feet, we have the, this is one of the Afghan, Afghanistan pomegranates. Both of these have been in the ground for about, this one has been in the ground the longest. Going on about six months, I would say. This one, maybe about five. But uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and aerate this ground down here some more. I actually have another area right there that I'm doing that is filled up that bucket back there about three or four pounds worth of rabbit poop yesterday. Spread it all out right there. Laid some hay down on top of it and then covered it with a tarp so that can start decomposing. Give that a few months so hopefully at least it'll have the ground somewhat ready before spring and summer. Usually you wanna meet perps. I usually try to have an area prepared at least six months in advance of me constantly putting composted material down, rabbit manure, or stuff like that that can break down and build up the soil. But those couple of months it still do fine just the same. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and finish aerating this. Give y'all one good look again at all this beautiful, beautiful soil. Like I said, this is about a seven to eight foot by four foot section. Come spring to summer, I'm going to try to fit as much trees in here this area right here is possible i'm thinking try to at least go with two kumquats i'm not quite sure yet just keep them trimmed like a bush size or maybe one or two orange trees just keep them trimmed as bush size as well i'm not quite sure yet this is the area that's close right here to the back porch this is the reason why I want to put the citrus here because I love the smell of the citrus flower so that's one of the things I would like to see when I first step out besides the blueberries and stuff there yes I got to trim all that up I'm just out here doing today doing a little bit of yard work but uh, most likely I know for a fact this is going to be a citrus area um, what I'm going to do before a week or two before I plant anything here, I'm gonna get probably about two bags worth of warm compost, dump it down there as well. Maybe mushroom compost, most likely mushroom compost. That's what I already have on hand. So throw it down there, mix it up in real good and let it sit for a while, then plant everything. Then I'll put a layer of mulch on top once I plant something here. And uh, I'll tell you what, why we're here on the video. Let's take a step over here into the greenhouse so we can see 
what I'm most likely planning on putting. <clears throat> Here we are, so back of the greenhouse, the citrus area. This here is my honey orange. Ugh. This here is the Nagimi Kumquat from McKenzie Farms, next to Florence, South Carolina. I live in Sumter, South Carolina. I bought this tree about two weeks ago. RA was loaded with fruit. And I mean, has a good amount of fruit on it starting off. I only paid $39 for the tree. A beautiful, beautiful tree. As well as a beautiful farm as well. If any of you guys are in the area, stop by. He's a wonderful guy, very knowledgeable, very nice, respectful. So check him out. Right there we have the uh, Satsuma Mandarin, also from McKenzie Farms. This is a very interesting one. This is the uh, Uno, the U-N-E-O Satsuma. I also purchased from him. Um, I cannot find any information on this tree other than like a one page on one website that says you know, it came from Japan, but it was a mutation of the, uh, I forgot what Satsuma it was, but I'll keep you guys posted on it. I'm waiting to taste it to see, compare it to the other ones that I have out here. So, that's going to be, hopefully it starts blooming next year. It's put on a good bit of new growth since I put it in the greenhouse. It was only about three, three weeks ago. Here's the smallest one I purchased from him. This is a uh, Browns Select Satsuma. I'm gonna go and actually purchase another one from him. Uh, soon, probably, sorry about that. Camera almost fell. Uh, probably about another week or two. Back here, we have the variegated pink lemons. That pot here, Meyer lemon. Right here, this is the uh, car car. It hasn't grown as much compared to the others, but there is new growth coming out. Here is a Kalamanian orange. It's blooming pretty good, new growth. Doing pretty good. Here's another Kalamanian. It is just shooting up. This is the one that did the most growth out of all of them. This is the uh, Robinson Naval Orange. All of this right here is new growth. This tree took off. Here's the Valencia Orange. It also took off pretty good. All of these trees are loving the greenhouse. They're growing pretty good and this is what I feed them. This is a trick I got from uh, Lead Farmer 73. It's a uh, banana water. You chop up the banana plant, soak it in water. I actually added a little a shovel full of rabbit manure as well so it's like banana water mixed with compost tea and I added a splash of 511 that I usually do when I come out to do the watering I stir that for at least 30 seconds get everything flowing and moving and I go ahead and water everything right now it's about 94 degrees in the greenhouse 
So, uh, we're gonna probably get everything a little small watering. Just maybe like a cup full or so. That's the last them throughout the day. Here in the greenhouse, I do occasionally water more often, I would say. Because even with this greenhouse, the way I have it set is it's set pretty much to where it gets 100% of the sun all throughout the day. So it stays warm in here and stays quite hot in here. When I first set it up during the middle of the summer, there were days where it got, whew, um, I think the highest I ever seen it in here was 126 degrees. So yeah, definitely got to keep it cool. That's the way just keep it cool in here. Besides opening the windows, opening the windows seems to help pretty good though. There's really no other need for anything else. This is the one with the windows on both doors. There's four on the side. So with me opening those, it stays pretty cool in here during the summer. But uh, guys, that will be it. I'm going to go ahead and call this video done. And I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. And I appreciate y'all being patient with me. This is the first time that I'm getting myself out of my comfort zone to make videos. I usually don't do this. I'm a private person. I like staying to myself. But I figured, step out your comfort zone, see what you can do. You always be surprised and amazed what you can do in life when you simply try. Every successful story always start out with someone trying something, right? But once again, you all, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Have a blessed day.